morning. Good morning, good morning. How are you all? Uh, Friday. Not Thursday. Wasn't Wednesday yesterday. Yesterday was Thursday. Not Wednesday, today's Friday. I got the hang of it last. <clears throat> it's all to do with Easter. So, sort of, you know, working week gets a bit screwy, doesn't it, when you have Monday off. And then I worked Tuesday and then I had Wednesday off. So when I came back on Thursday, I thought it was Wednesday. Because I forgot I'd had two days off this week. Oh! Oh! That would have been a crisis. And the old days when we were on feed for item, two days off. That was the takings 40% down on the week. Now, not thanks to the old third party capitation plans, at least you've got some money coming in. So anyway, where were we? Where were we? Nurse indemnity. Let's do a quick recap. The question of whether nurses required their own indemnity was important to the National Health Service, so they commissioned Finley Scott to do a review. Link down below, have a look. I'll put it in the video. If you didn't see yesterday's video, then watch yesterday's video, it might be helpful. Which was the sort of the first part of the whole sorry saga. Finley Scott said that no nurses don't need indemnity, providing they're employed then they're covered by the vicarious liability arising as a result of their employment. In other words, you sue the employer, you don't sue the employee. So in the meantime, nurses, desperate for some sort of uh, respectability and stability, I suppose, within the profession, and against my advice, I would say, old Pam Swain, who runs the Baden, the British Association of Dental Nurses, or Baden, you know, I said to her, don't go on the register, Pam. I said, don't do it. Don't, it's, you know, it'll be a big disaster. Or nothing good. Nothing good has ever come of anyone registered on the GDC. That's what I said. They're just a quango, a statutory body. They just exist to empire build and fleece everybody who's on the register. Hello from the GDC, in case you're watching. Good morning to you. So. But no, did they listen to Old Angry? No. They decided to proceed because they wanted that little, you know, few digits after the name. Then what happened? As soon as they registered, what happened? As soon as they registered, oh, the crying, the wailing, the gnashing of teeth, the protesting, the debating about who's supposed to be paying the GDC registration fee, the, does your boss pay it? Do I have to pay it? I am not, I haven't got a pay increase to pay for anything, let alone, another few hundred quid to the GDC every couple of years and for what and for what exactly I mean that was the point for what a bit of respectability you know the things that nurses really needed like pensions they didn't come about as a result of GDC registration all that happened was you lumbered yourself with this ridiculous Dickensian disciplinary arcane procedure and all the expense and the cost of the barristers and the, uh, you know, the second division middle management that's required to keep the whole, keep the beast alive. So, <clears throat> anyway, BADN then comes up with this brainway with WR Berkeley to tack on indemnity insurance because, oh, you're registered with the GDC now, so so once you're registered with the GDC, you might find yourself up in front of the GDC. So if you might find yourself up in front of the GDC, you're going to need some sort of support, aren't you? Yeah, for your professional association. Not that we do it for nothing. We'll, you know, you'd have to, you need some indemnity insurance. That's what you need. Cover you for a barrister. Just in case you have a non-existent claim. So anyway, um, you know, I mean, quite a few nurses fell for this and it was all right. It was quite a... It was a money spinner for WR Berkeley, and it was a money spinner for the PADN. But then the, the only crack in the dam was the, you know, the nurses that said, uh, you know, I've, I've been looking at this and I'm not entirely sure that I need it. Or uh, the ones who said, you know, what, can you tell me, you know, who you've supported recently, who's had a negligence claim, or someone will say, oh, my husband's a lawyer, and he said, I probably don't need it, or, 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 Someone will say, I've read a dental article from this Watty, what he says. 
what he says you don't need it. What he's talking about something like the Finley Scott review. And uh, that says we don't need it. And I've downloaded the Finley Scott review. And he says quite clearly in black and white, in, uh, you know, in actual words of one syllable, we do not need it. So uh, thanks very much. I'd love to join the BADN, but I don't want the indemnity. Is that if that's all right? So after a while, they sort of gave in to uh, inevitability, really, I would say. But public demand and sort of split the... You know, you, they sort of stopped trying to push it so hard. But that, but push it they did. You know, if any nurse rang up the association, the old Baden, and said, do you want, uh, you know, do I need indemnity? Oh, yes, they said. Oh, yes. And, oh, we got a product for you. We've got it insured through WR Berkeley's at Lloyd's. We just give you it, you know, exactly what you need. Not what you want or what, you know, you might want, or, but, but what you need. And the ones who rang up and said, oh, I think I'll have the cheaper option with that. Oh, I wouldn't advise that. I think you ought to ring up the General Dental Council and ask them, see what they say. Don't just trust us. It's like the old PRSPPL thing again, isn't it? PRSPPL, ring them up. Do I need this? Oh, yes, but don't just trust us. Ring up the BDA. BDA will tell you. They'll tell you you need it. So what happens is the poor nurse rings up the GDC. Do I need indemnity? Yes, of course you do. We say so on our site. If you read our site, then every nurse must have recourse to some sort of indemnity insurance. Now, what the GD doesn't say, GDC doesn't say, they don't say, but if you're an employee, according to Findy Scott, by dint of your vicarious liability, you're probably covered as an employee through your employer. So providing you're vicariously liable through your employer and you're an employee, you probably don't need to buy it yourself. You don't need to get it through the BADN, the old Baden. You can just, you know, you're just anyone who wants to sue anyone will sue your boss, not you. So you are covered, you're covered. You are covered by dint of your vicarious liability not by dint of paying for a policy that you don't need, right? But the GDC doesn't say that, do they? They just say, yes, you do. So, and then they ring up, and then the BADN, they ring up the BADN again, oh, well, the BADN says, what did the General Dental Council say? And then poor nurse says, yes, the GDC says, you're right, I do need it. So the says, oh, 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 never mind. I told you they would, didn't I? I told you they would. Just sign here, sign up for this unnecessary policy that you don't need, that's making us money because nobody ever claims on it. And that's the situation. I mean, that is, well, that was Death Junction there. I went through Death Junction. I didn't stop talking. Still, I'm still alive. <laughs> hey, that's a positive for some, negative for others. So, uh, yeah, so, I mean, what's the point of all this angry you're saying? What is the point? And the point is, my point is not to say that you don't need indemnity, okay? Because you do. You know, you, you, you the, the GDC's right. They, you should, the patient should have some recourse uh, if you're negligent. Not, not to bring frivolous claims, you know, if you're not, if you're a good dentist or a good nurse. But, you know, I mean, in the case of ne negligence, which is like a serious failure of the system, isn't it? No, my point is that we were talking yesterday about fake news, weren't we? And how, you know, the, the you sort of, you ring up people, you ring up the BDA for advice about PRS PPL and expect to get the right advice and you don't, you get the wrong advice. Or you ring up the GDC about indemnity and you expect to get the right advice and you don't, you get the wrong advice. In both cases, you get the opposite of the correct advice, right? So, there's sort of two worlds, really, aren't there? There's two, there's two bubbles, and you live in either one or the other. You live in the, the sort of the real world bubble. I've checked everything personally and found out what the situation is. Uh, or you live in the, the sort of the administrative bubble where. Uh, you've basically been down the local postgraduate centre and just asked and someone's told you and you've, uh, how it is and, and you sort of accepted it. So, oh yeah, okay, okay, you know. 
Oh, do I need to wash a disinfector? Yeah, yeah, I do. yeah, you do, yeah. Okay, oh, I'll better go and spend a couple of thousand pounds on buying one then, shall I? Yeah, okay. You know, and that's what separates. Uh, I'm talking to you now, right, you. I'm talking to you, okay? Which bubble are you in, right? Because I'm in the other bubble. I'm in the bubble where you read the legislation and you read the statutory instruments and you find out what, how the world really works. But which bubble are you in? You know, because what's separating us now, right, is this glass screen, right? This just, just put your finger up here for a second. Just touch my finger, right? Can, can you feel it or can you feel a sheet of glass in the way? Because that's the only thing that's separating us, is this sheet of glass. Do you want to come across to my bubble? It's nice in here, you know? You get to annoy people because there's nothing that annoys people in the other bubble than being told that actually what they always, you know, what they've been told is true is not true because you've actually checked it out. People in my bubble, they, they make, they're always making other people in other bubbles angry. That's why I'm, you know, I make so many people angry because I say to them, that's not actually, you're not living in reality. They think I'm not living in reality. So this woman comes in the surgery yesterday. This is my latest from the National Health Service story, all right? She wants a second opinion. We do second opinions free of charge. We don't mind, we don't charge for anything, we don't charge for the checkup, we don't, if we have to take bite wings or periopicals, we don't charge for those. We do a fantastic report, probably running to a thousand words, two or three sheets of A4, I mean, most of it is obviously pre-printed, um, you know, advice about gum disease and decay and stuff like that. But uh, it does include uh, clinical photos, which we do clinical photos with our digital camera free of charge. And it's quite good. It illustrates the uh, condition of the mouth and right the way down to even, rather than telling someone they've got a hole in their tooth or a crack in their tooth, we actually literally show them the hole of the crack by the sort of process of reducing the intangibility of the problem, which is great for, um, in, you know, treatment uptake because, you know, people don't have to take our word for anything. They just, we literally show them what the problem is and then they ask us what we can do about it. So anyway, her story is that uh, she's been to her dentist and they finally told her she needs to have seven teeth out. And um, so they've taken three of them out already and they referred her to have them done under sedation because she was she's quite a nervous patient and she didn't really like the idea of having three teeth out anyway because they weren't giving her trouble. Uh, but they told her she had to have them out so she went along and she had sedation and she had them out and now they want to make arrangements to take the other four out on the other side. This is all her chewing teeth on, on her left lower left. So she's got no chewing on her left at all because she's got no lower left teeth to chew on. So, so she's now left with the other side, the right side and the front. And um, so she just wants a second opinion, just wants to know whether it's correct that she needs to have seven teeth out. And, but more than that, you know, she wants to know why. I said to her, did they tell you? I said, were these teeth giving you trouble? No. Were they giving you toothache? No. Were they all loose and falling out? No. Did they tell you why they were taking them out? No. Just that you needed to have them out? Yes. Okay. Um, and then what about these other teeth? Are they giving you trouble, pain, toothache, or anything? No. Okay. So we looked in her mouth, and sure enough, everything is wrong with it, okay? She's 78, she's 78 years and a bit. <laughs> and she's got this shocking, shocking mouth full of decay and gum disease. But, I think again, it's a bigger, you have to sort of step back and look at the bigger picture, okay? She wasn't having any trouble from these teeth, so basically I told her, I didn't tell her what I wanted, she wanted to hear, but what I told her was what she wanted to hear, which is that there's no reason on earth why she should have those teeth out if she was chewing on them quite nicely, um, until they started giving her trouble. Even though they couldn't be saved for the most part, they were quite extensively decayed. And, you know, she could have bitten on anything at any time and any one of them would have broken off. But having said that, 
that she was chewing on them, you know? And she was probably chewing on the ones on the other side as well until some bugger took them out. So, she wanted to know what she could do on the left-hand side where she'd had the teeth out. She said, can you have a look at the bone and see if I can have a bridge? Well, of course, she can't have a bridge because it's a free-end saddle. And she's not going to have an implant either because, you know, she was complaining that they charged her 20 quid for something. something. She's not an implant candidate. So, I said to her, she can have a denture, a single, uh, you know, a free-end saddle denture just on the left. But that's going to be a disaster in a mouth like that anyway, where you've got rampant gum disease and, ramp, you know, rampant... Mary Berry, I blame that bloody Mary Berry. She has got so much to answer for, that woman. I said to her, you know, what are you eating, you know? And she'd give me this little embarrassed smile and said, oh, I think it's meringues. Meringues? I mean, who, eat mer who eats meringues? I mean, and more than that, who, uh, who eats meringues who hasn't made a meringue or know how a meringue is made and doesn't realize that it's just pure sugar? Sugar and egg white. The egg white being the mechanism to keep the sugar in in place. So, oh yeah, she says, uh, oh meringues, my you know weakness and cakes, cakes and biscuits, bloody Mary Berry. <coughs> but as I say, the, the bigger picture is this, right? Okay, you know, this is this is what I'm, my thought for the day. This woman, and I know I've mentioned her age a couple of times, and that's because. I said to her, look, you've got the two classic problems that we see all day, every day in, in dental surgery. One is people don't brush their teeth as well as they think they do. Second one is people eat more sugar than they're prepared to admit. Three, three there is no three. That's it. Three is everything else and everything else is like nothing practically. So, but I mean, why am I telling her this at 78? I said, I, I got her teeth disclosed up and I gave her a brush and I said to her, look, I'll, I'll show you like on one couple of teeth how to do the brushing and then just copy me and do the same on the others. So I put the brush on her gum and she went, oh, oh, like I touched them with a soldering iron. And I like, what's the problem? I said, are they? Have you never touched your gums with a brush? And she's like, it's quite obvious that her gums had never seen... In fact, I'll tell you, it was a miracle. It was a miracle that she had any teeth at all. And for someone who has never, ever given up her sweet her liking for sweet things and, and never really ever put a brush on her teeth or gums in anger she was doing quite well and yet some moron decided that she was better off without her teeth and I said to her you know there's no in a mouth like that with uncontrolled gum disease with uncontrolled decay you're not going to put anything other than your, your classic gum stripper are you you know you might as well take her outside to the glue factory and shoot her in the head has take her teeth out. So, you know, I mean, I think, I mean, I could tell that to him straight, do you know what I mean? She, I, she said, oh, oh, she was going, oh, 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 and I said, look, I said, that's what you come here for, the truth, and this is the truth. I said, you, you know, you've had a life of eating what you liked, no one's ever showed you how to brush properly, you've had three teeth out, that I personally wouldn't have taken out. Perhaps, you know, there were other, there were good reasons to take them out. I don't know. They're gone, we'll never know. But, uh, and I just hope that she's gonna go back to her dentist and say, uh, I've been to see someone with a modicum of common sense who's told me that I don't need to have these teeth out. And their dentist is gonna be annoyed, aren't they? Because they're gonna be like, you know, I don't like it if dentists contradict my treatment plans. But hopefully she'll still have one side to chew on. Right, here we are. So, don't... 
buy indemnity for your nurse. That doesn't imply, but hygienists for example are a different thing. Hygienists are self-employed. Hygienists do need indemnity because they're not covered by vicarious liability. Don't get the wrong end of the stick. If you've got any questions, get in touch and um, uh, download the Scott Review. Okay, uh, the link is in the thing below. And last but not least, get out of the bubble. Get out of the bubble. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.